And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, I'm Tom Vassell, and today we're taking a look at Airship City. Welcome to Airship City, says the box. Electing to make a new home among the clouds, humankind has assembled a variety of airships to provide utilities, thereby creating Airship City. However, this newly created city lacks both a means of transportation and vital public facilities. So, as airship engineers, you'll gather materials and work hard to build airships to further the development of Airship City. Will your contributions to the development of Airship City earn you fame as an airship engineer? So that's what this game is. It's a uh, worker movement game where you have these airships and you're going to move them around and take different actions on the board. But that board is going to move. Here's how it plays. The board is a random 4x4 four four group of tiles you're going to place out here, and one of those tiles, the harbor, each player is going to place two of their ships on this. As the game goes by, you'll have an opportunity to put more ships on it. Over here is a spot where you keep track of both victory points and the rounds, and it's essentially going to be 20 rounds. Each round, uh, each there's a, four rounds becomes one stage. And so when you go to the next stage, everyone's going to get the bonus and a few tiles are going to reset. And then once you hit round 17 through 20, the game could end if certain criteria are met, some buildings are built, so on and so forth. That will end the game and then whoever has the most points is the winner. Each player has their own board where they'll be keeping track of wood, iron, gold, and steam. And this just basically keeps track of your resources. You can't have more than 10 of these, although later on in the game if you build a renovation tile, you will be able to go all the way up to 20 of any particular resource. On a player's turn, they're going to move their ships, and each ship can move one space and take the action of that space, and then you'll flip the ship over to show that you've done it. You cannot use the same space twice, although if you move into a space with your ship, you can move again. So I could move over here if I wanted to, or up here, and take that action there. Also, as a player takes their turn, they can pay one steam before they move, and you can shift a row or a column like this, taking one tile and pushing it that way, so that if I wanted to get to the workshop, I could do so. So as the game goes by, players are going to be moving around to these different tiles. Now, when you go to many tiles, for example, if I go here, I'll get three wood. If I go to this tile, I'll get two steam. If I go to this tile, I'll get two iron, and there's one here with wood and iron. Also on these tiles, if you have, if you're on the tile and someone else does it, you will get a bonus for being there. So if the green person goes here and takes three wood, I also get a wood. And then if someone else comes on here later on, maybe the yellow player, then both the green and the pink would get one wood. One of the tiles, uh, or as the game goes by, there's a chance that these can be upgraded and produce even more with bonuses. That is done here at the workshop. When you go to the workshop, you are able to go to your own player board, pay the resources needed to get rid of one of these renovation tiles. So let's say I pay seven iron and three gold. Now my iron can go up to 20. It also gives me three victory points uh, and it gives me the gray badge here and I can flip over one of the tiles that has a gray dot on it. So in this case, for example, perhaps I'll turn over this mine. Now the difference is I have a gray badge, so whenever one of my ships goes to the mine, not only will I get two, I'll get an extra one here, so I'll get three. And if someone else turns over one with a gray badge, maybe the valley up here at the top. Someone else turns it over when they take their gray renovation tile. So when I go here, I get a wood and an iron, and then I can take an extra iron because I have the gray badge. And so having these badges, getting those renovation tiles, not only give you extra resources and three victory points, but can allow you to, your actions to get better as you fly around the board. Now the main focus of this game is building airships, and you'll do that. There are two shipyards, you can see one here and one here, in the game. When you build an airship, you'll be using this board here. You'll see there are various types of airships on this board that have different costs to them. So if I want to build the wooden private ship, then I have to pay four wood and two steam. Now when you build a ship, you pay that and you can do one of two things. You can immediately sell it. If you sell it, you'll go over here to this board. I'm selling a wooden ship. I get three gold for it. 
And then the price for future level one wooden ships is going to, well, it's still three, but you can see it's eventually going to drop to two and to one gold. Or I can donate it to the city. When I donate it to the city, it gives me a special ability. In this case, when building all future ships, I pay one less wood. Also, whoever has the most tokens here gets to put a token here, which could be worth points at the end of the game. And whenever you build this wooden private ship, you get a victory point. You're going to need to build two wooden private ships before you can build a wooden residential ship, which gives two victory points, and maybe it means I pay one less wood when I'm building one of those upgrade tiles, and I need to build two wooden residential ships before I can build cargo ships, which are worth three points, and subtract two when building these huge construction buildings here at the bottom of the board. This is another tile that you can do. Pay these big prices, these give a whole lot of points four, five, or six, but they also cost an incredible amount of resources. Another tile lets you take contracts. When you take a contract, you're going to take the contract. So let's say I want to take this contract here, which needs seven iron and will give me two victory points and two gold. So when I do that, I'm going to go to my player board, and because this contract has a two on it, I'm going to place it under the two here. Every stage, not every round, but every stage, this is going to move one like this. If I fulfill it, I'll get the rewards and put it up here. But if I don't fulfill it in time, it will go here and I'll lose points at the end of the game. So you likely won't take these unless you can fulfill them. And you have one, two, or three stages to fulfill them. And you definitely need to fulfill them by the end of the game. There's a few other tiles on the board. The lighthouse lets you shift two things for free. There is the guild hall where you can pay 10 gold to get another ship that comes out on the board. If you go back to the harbor, you can use the ability of the harbor to make all your other ships fly back home. And that's pretty much it. You're just gonna keep doing this until a certain number of, of these big giant buildings over here have been constructed or a certain number of ships have been constructed and then you just add up points and at the end of the game whoever has the most points is the winner. Having the most of a certain type of ship, uh, having the most tiles here and having the most tiles here is going to give you bonuses. These are listed here at the bottom of the board so you can see some bonus points that are given out at the end of the game. These are added to points that you've gotten for building uh, things over the course of the game and then you add those in and someone wins. So the game is a lot of cardboard here. Uh, it looks good. The symbology is fine and has that almost paper cutout uh, artwork to some degree. Very simplistic. I don't mind that. I don't know that I'm a huge fan of these tiny tokens used to put on whether you control a ship or not. And some of the symbols are not... We, I found that people kept confusing them. So for example, this workshop means build one of those renovation tiles and people would be like, oh, that's building one of the buildings. No, that's the architect's office, which is right up there. So it can, that's a little confusing, I think. And when you flip the tile over and make it better, it has a yellow sheen in the background, but it's sometimes easy to forget everything that goes around. And also for some people, they're not gonna be a fan of using these sliding dials for resources. It's not a big deal. But I think I would almost rather just have the resources. Give me some wood, give me some iron. It's a little bit more tangible. I do like how this looks, though, when you take this off. And now I can have up to 20 of them. So I get why that's there. Uh, you might be wondering what these are. These are bonuses, tiles that you can get as the game goes by. When you build a, a certain number of ships of a type, you can use this once per round for a small bonus. Um, switch one resource for another resource, etc., etc. So. I like how everything looks, but it is not the best of quality and everything has to fit inside the very thin box. My initial impressions of Airship City were pretty high. I really liked the idea of this worker placement engine building game in a sense that you get to move these airships around and your airships will get better over time as you donate airships to the city you get bonuses which will make things better you can renovate your board letting you keep more resources giving you more bonuses and all that has a pretty cool aspect to it the modular board itself is a big draw to this game you know, being able to move the tiles around, and I like the idea of bouncing off your own airships and calling them back and moving again, and I can't get this style, but I can slide it using some steam. All that's pretty cool, but first of all, you may not realize this game is three to four players, which is a weird count. It doesn't work with two. 
And with three to four players, I essentially do this when I'm playing. Because I want to do different things on the board, but I know that the other players are most likely going to be manipulating the board and moving the board. And so there's no reason to me to sit there to try to figure out my turn, since the board is going to be very different when it comes back to me. And because of that, the game slows down a little because you can't really plan until your turn comes and then you can decide what to do. I'll sit there and go, okay, I'll slide this this way and then move that there, then bounce that airship off. Oh, never mind, you just slid that that direction. Now I gotta rethink everything. So I've, it's a cool concept and it works, but it definitely does slow the game down a bit and makes it a bit chaotic. The points seem to be evenly balanced. It's, you know, building, donating airships or building the buildings or renovating tiles or doing the different uh, contracts. All that seems to be balanced. I've seen people do both. In our first game, it seemed to be a nice balance. And then when I played it again, I saw that more, you know, again, people going different paths, they seem to be balanced. But everyone kind of agreed on this game is that it's a really, it's kind of a slog. See, it's an engine building game, but it's a long one, and it's a really slow one. To get another airship requires 10 gold. Well, not if you build some ships, it will reduce the gold by one. Or if you, you know, complete some contracts, you get gold. So by the time you get a third ship out on the board, the game is likely half over, and you put a lot of effort into it. All these bonuses, like, so for example, if I build, uh, donate a wooden ship here, now all my ships are minus one wood. All right, I build two, now they're minus two wood. That's great, but now if I want to build these metal ships, I need to be using the iron to build those, and then that gives me minus iron, and it just feels like, ooh, my, I, I, I worked hard and I get minus two off a cost of 11. That's just not as interesting. And then some of the bonuses that they give you later on are for things that you probably should have already done by that point in time. So the bonuses aren't that exciting. All these bonuses don't really add up. And the area control aspect here isn't that interesting either because it's not for each one. It's just whoever controls the most at the end of the game. These big buildings down here are points, but there's no real satisfaction about building them. The coolest thing really is building those renovation tiles and giving your ships bonuses as they bounce around. But even those are only on a few tiles on the board and you have to kind of manipulate to get those and ooh, I got one more wood. Don't get me wrong, I like the idea of the engine building, but it's slow. It's kind of like, ooh, instead of getting 10, you now get 11. It's that kind of slight extra bonus, which is not necessarily a bad thing, but in a board game, I kind of want to be moving fast. And so when you mix that with the board moving around too much, the game is just too random and slow for me. I like everything else. I like the different you know, aspects of the game and the selling your ship for gold, which again, I think they might have made those prices a little higher because it's almost always better to donate it to the city. Selling it almost feels like, a, all right, I'll sell it. I'll take some quick cash now. It's not even that much, like three, six gold. But the bonus that you get and the points you get are, would probably be worth more. But anyway, uh, but all the different aspects are fun, but the game just feels longer than it should be. And since you can't really plan until your turn, that makes it feel even longer. There's interaction between players, essentially, as you move the board around. But that's it. And also, if someone lands in your spot, you get the extra wood and things. And, and that's fine. That's not a bad idea that this game has. So I have to say, though, that with all the worker movement, worker placement games out there, this one is one I can't recommend as much because it just takes forever for the engine to get rolling. And by the time it gets rolling, the game is almost over. And it doesn't feel as satisfying as a game like this should feel, at least to me. I really think some people are going to like it. I think the theme is fun and interesting. And I think some people might not mind a longer game where essentially you wait to your turn to decide what to do. For me though, that's more problematic and I just didn't like the game as much because of it. That's Airship City. Dice Tower Judgment, it's a little too long for what it is.